Welcome to OMB Warehouse, home of the Gray Goat Garage. Yeah, Mrs. Goat, I don't know. She hasn't really talked about this yet, but it's getting a little long. I'll have to wait and see how... Uh, <laughs> My boss is uh, sending me messages while we're on here. Tyler, good to see you. Montoya Dorch, the king of mini bikes, with Big Booty Judy and, and Randy's in the house, Vernon, the Thriller, and uh, Miss Victoria. And Karen Krause, the queen of seats. Good to see you guys in here. Um, Jeff Hoffman, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Um, Trevor Stone in the house. Simple Tom. Dude. You got to get hold of Chris. We talked about some stuff the other day. So anyway, this is OMB Warehouse live from the Grego Garage. I'm Eric. I am the Grego. You know why? That's why. Because I'm old and I'm tired. And it uh, gives you gray hair. Look, it's coming in on the sides too. Yeah, I'm getting old. Tonight, you know, I told old man Hint, biggest mistake I made in building um, – I don't know, 25, 30 mini bikes that I built was not using more torque converters. I was a little afraid. You know, I had my chicken hat on and, and didn't want to deal with it because I, you know, it was the great unknown. But um, hopefully we'll dispel some mystery tonight. And um, I don't know that we're going to see Bigfoot tonight, but um, it, it, you never know. Anything can happen here at the Grego Garage. So anyway, for you newbies here, um, we, we play some games. So get your Googles ready. I have a series of five questions that we're going to play Quizzo with. And with Quizzo, if you win the, if you answer the most uh, questions correctly, that's your chance to win a prize. So we, uh, we, we, we play for real here at the Gray Goat Garage. So um, got, got a link that I'm going to put up here with some parts. And uh, we'll be talking about a few of those tonight. So may, make sure that you check that because uh, – we're going to be all over it. Ooh. Liz DeFrancis, good to see you, sweetheart. Um, miss you. So let's get together soon. And uh, Evil Ed's in the house. So, and Adrian and Max and, gosh, darn, and, and Jody Powell. So I need to straighten up and fly right. Jody, pay attention tonight. We're going to talk torque, converters, that is. So um, since, since Jody's in the house, um, wow, this thing frosted over pretty good. Um, like I've showed you guys in the past, you know, this, this is Jody's cup from ARC. Um, and here's the cup for the gray go garage. You can see the difference, but it probably would look like Jody and I standing next to each other. So anyway, I'm not a giant. I'm just larger. I'm, I'm twice the man that Jody is. So Jody, thank you for all your help, sir. And, uh, here, here's something for you, Jody. Keep us posted on that lighted billet flywheel. All kinds of people are asking. They're ready to pony up the money, hopefully. Okay, so ARC, Quality Parts, Jody, thank you, sir, for all your help. <sighs> tonight, we're going to be show having the beer of the night. Um, tonight's beer is from Bear Republic, not to be confused with Beer Republic. I chose this one because it, had, it said Racer 5 on it, and that reminds me of Speed Racer when I was a kid. And that was one of my favorite shows, besides the Flintstones, of course. You know, and then we came with um, Gilligan's Island and, you know, uh, Marianne. And, uh, but anyway, tonight, this is India Pale Ale from Racer 5. And, uh, of, of course, we have to use the Gray Goat OMB Warehouse bottle opener to get this thing open. So let's, uh, let's get her done. So we'll, we'll, we'll pour, and then we'll have a little foam going on. So it is a pale beer. I'm trying to tilt the cup a little bit so uh, we're not foaming up too bad. So there we go. We'll let the the foam go down. I don't like to get the foam in my mustache, especially when I'm when I'm on uh, you know live because we can't have that. So anyway, oh Chad White Knight Senior is in the house. Uh, good to see you, Chad. Hope everything is well with you. Um, 212R. Um, we're working on that, Randy. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, I hope to have the 212R um, in, in the house, and um, we'll have those available. So I am working on that as we speak. So 
I, I know Mark has been sick all week and and uh, not feeling well, so I gave the guy a break. But I'll be hound dogging him next week. So we'll uh, we'll get that stuff up. So anyway, what I've got here is this old crusty Hemi Predator engine that's been in the shop for a while now. Um, this is one of the the engines that I use to test products on. So um, we're going to mount a torque converter to this. You can see I've already got our engineered um, Coleman plate on here that uh, lifts the engine up and moves it forward. We'll have those for sale here very soon. So look, look for these uh, at the warehouse. And, of, of course, I'll be um, showing it on, on the show. So when you get your torque converter, you got a lot of pieces in the box. You'll have the belt, obviously. And the cover. Oh, you see that? I'm big in China too. They, they've got me on syndication. So, but but they uh, dub my voice with subtitles. So I, I I'm digging that. So anyway, Gray Go Garage. That's where you're at, baby. Okay, we're gonna put this stuff aside for a minute because we're gonna need some room to work. Okay, so you're gonna get a white box here, and this is gonna be your driver clutch. Yeah, and we'll set that aside because we don't need that yet. And the driven will come assembled with typically, hope you can see that in there. That, that's a 10 tooth uh, sprocket for 40, 41, 420 chain. Um, don't buy 41 chain. It's weaker than 35. You don't need it either by 40 or 420. Um, so it's got the gear installed here, but this nut is always loose on this. So we're going to just loosen up this nut real quick. And you'll see a, a nut and a washer here. And then this unit just slides right off. Now you can see the, the 10-tooth 4041, 420 sprocket. That comes off with the key. And then you're going to see a washer that has a notch cut in it. I'm going to tear this whole thing apart just because I'm weak and we'll, we'll get this mounted up first. So this shaft pulls right out. Here's the deal on this shaft. Now, if you can see, there's just a snap ring on the end of that shaft. Once you put that shaft through the torque converter unit, the only thing that's holding that shaft into the back part of the unit is that snap ring. And we all know snap rings don't like a lot of torque. So when we're assembling this unit, we don't want to torque that to the moon. Uh, it is a nylon lock nut, but uh, it doesn't have to be real tight. It needs to be snug to remove any play from the unit. So what we're going to do, the reason why we have this plate here on the bottom is because this was designed back when Mo Moses was in high school um, by Comet. And this is a, a copy of the Comet, the uh, aftermarket units. This was designed back when everything was overhead, uh, flathead with a cylinder that sticks straight up. The issue that we have with these engines is the cylinder angles towards the back. And with the crankshaft being so far forward because the cam's right here, we have to orient this to come down a little bit and not, not be flat like this. So th there is ways to do that, but... Um, you know, I don't like drilling or cutting this piece. I like to keep it solid and keep it right here. So one of the biggest issues that we have is in this little goodie bag. Metric hardware. Repeat after me. Metric hardware. The biggest issue that we have as a company is metric hardware. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so here's the 12 to 35 chain sprocket. This is what's called a C-type sprocket, which has a hub on both sides. That allows the chain to ride right in the center. Um, same with the, the 4041 sprocket. It's a C-type sprocket. A B-type sprocket would have the hub all the way on one side and the sprocket uh, all the way on the other side. So with torque converters, you have to have that. There's just no room anywhere to have that. So, but uh, it's also, you're also going to see a heavy steel spacer. 
you're going to see a three quarter inch ID washer and the hardware, of course. Metric eight millimeter, right? I can put this into the Predator crank, which the Predator engines, despite what the experts on YouTube and Facebook are going to tell you, these are SAE or American standard threads. So this metric bolt here is so close that I can catch a full thread into the crank. And what happens is a lot of people will start that into the crank, jump on one with the impact wrench, and it's going to strip out that bolt or and or strip out the crank. So with that, that's not something that we can do. So I, I uh, have a few people that say, oh, man, my driver unit came apart, flew everywhere. And that, that's not something that I want for you, and that's not something that you want for you. Let's face it, that, that's not great. So the proper hardware is very important. So many people use that same, and these are all the same thread bolt here, 516s and 516s here. But so many people catch that full thread into the side of the side cover, jump on it with an impact. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, they fit. They didn't fit. That's why in the link that we provided, we have a bolt kit that has SAE standard bolts, okay? So if you got a Predator engine, use these. If you have a, an older clone, then maybe you can get away with the metric hardware. If you have a Coleman, it's anybody's guess. Uh, the Coleman's right now coming with a 5 8 crank, a 16 millimeter crank, or a 3 quarter crank. I believe everything that's new generation will be 16 millimeter, but who knows? Um, oh, yeah. Because I looked up my VIN number uh, at Coleman, and they told me, yeah, you don't know until you actually go and visualize it and see what's going on. So metric hardware in the kit. If you need SAE hardware for like a Predator engine, then get the right hardware. Um, don't, 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 uh, Eric, my driver unit blew off and parts scattered everywhere. What do I do? Well, you go back to the drawing board, make sure you didn't screw up your crank, and then start again. So this plate has all sorts of mounting positions that, that you can go on. If you had your tank off, you could mount it straight up in the air if you wanted to. If you had a, a special situation where you need to mount it forward, this doesn't know how it's mounted. It doesn't know. So it doesn't matter. If you had a, a situation on, on some go-karts, with a, with a taller type train, you could mount this straight down like this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't know, okay? The only thing you have to be concerned about is, in some situations, these fins might interfere with the chain. So with, with that, th then you have to be, uh, be careful about it. The other issue is the back hub of this. You see the ridges in here, and that's to make it strong. Um, the, the, the guys, the, the bicycle guys that mount their, get a, a 5 8 jack shaft, swap the bearings out to a loose bearing, and put the sprocket on this side, that will break this unit. So you got to be careful with that. Hi, Nancy, the mail lady. You can just drop those right there in the dry spot, sweetheart. So we're going to go ahead and get this mounted. Another issue that you may have on some of these engines is the dipstick in the back. Um, is that a problem for the gray goat? No, I got a hacksaw. I just tighten this down and hack the top of it off. Uh, I don't think the Predator has an issue with it, but we'll see here in a second. Yeah, it does. Just need to turn that sideways like that. Okay. So let's get this mounted up, and then we'll. You guys get ready to start googling, because we're gonna we're gonna Google here in a minute. These are the SAE American bolts. And what we're going to do with these is uh, we're going to tighten them down with a half inch socket. So, but you'll notice you have sometimes you have to move this around a little bit to get these started. Don't get them all tight and just start snugging one up. Leave them loose for a minute just so you can get them threaded by hand. And that's one thing that, that I've told you guys. A lot of times when I'm assembling stuff, um, I, I don't use the impact. When I'm tearing stuff up, yeah, I'll use the impact. You know why? Because I don't care. So, hi, Mrs. Goat. Hi. So, we're going to go ahead and get this unit snugged up here. 
And you'll notice I'm using a quarter inch drive socket. And I, and I hate to mention this, that's because I'm extremely strong. And it's tough to be this strong and good looking. So I do the best I can. I stripped out too many bolts as a, as a young child. That's how I got good at, at, at drilling and tapping. Okay, I'm just going to get these snugged up, and then we can begin with everything else. Okay, well, let's get on to a question. Oh, no, let's get on to some Kool-Aid because, wow, I'm building up a thirst. Young Hey Fat Choi, that means Happy New Year in China. I'm liking that. It's a little bit hoppy, but it, it is very smooth. A little, little bite at the end. It's very nice. That is the Bear Republic Racer 5 India Pale Ale. Um, I hope they sponsor the show. You know, we, we've had all sorts of, uh, you know, Discovery Channel wants wants to do a, a, a series on me, and I just told them no. I'm too happy uh, helping the fine people out there in the mini bike land. So you guys ready to do a, a question? This one, Geography 101. San Isidro, and spelled Y-S-I-D-R-O. And Jim Byro, San is S-A-N. San Isidro, Y-S-I-D-R-O. California. San Isidro, California is bordered by what international city? San Isidro, California is bordered by what international city? Mr. Evil Ed, you got to have this one. San Isidro, Y-S-I-D-R-O, is bordered by what international city? And you're all going to spell it wrong, so I'll, I'll let you go with the misspellings, okay? I'm bleeding. I want to shave before the show. Yeah. Ah, finger. Did it last week. Yeah, it's still ugly. Randy Gumpet, and he spelled it right. Tijuana. All right. That was actually for Evil Ed, but, uh, you know, because everything to Evil Ed is Tijuana. And so many people say, yeah, Tijuana. No, there's no extra A in there. It's Tijuana. All right. Which in Spanish means town of lizard people. Okay. Like me on Facebook. I am Eric. I am the great goat, but I'm also help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, I always get a lot of questions on torque converters and there's a lot of confusion out there. And so many people want to take the easy way out on some stuff. Just do it right the first time. Okay. So let, let, let's get this right. So anyway, now that we've got this plate mounted, we can put our keyway in here. And I'm going to butt this keyway right up to the bearing. Then I'm going to take the stepped washer and put it on here. And now I have my selection of 35 or 40, 41, 420 chain. But you're not going to use 41 because it's weaker than 35, right? So we're going to put the 35 on here just for fun. Okay. So now I'm just going to slip that on. I'm going to make sure that that shaft is not coming out the back side. And then I can take this. This is the driven unit. The front unit here is the driver. The rear is the driven. So we can put this driven unit on here. Okay. And get that key pushed in. And then we have our large flat. 5 8 ID washer, and we have the nut. Here's how we tighten the nut. We take this ginormous 15 16 inch wrench and we hold this with our hands. We just simply turn this until it's snug. Got a little bit of play in there. Go ahead and get rid of that, just like that. Done. That's all it needs. Don't jump on this with an impact. 
because what you can do is you can pull that circlip off the back, pop that off, and then who knows what's going to happen. So there we are with that. So now in the fancy white box, we have the driver unit. So the driver goes on the crankshaft and it's comprised of multiple pieces. Normally when you get these, there's zip ties around them, but I prep for the show, okay? Because that's how I roll. On the outside, you'll notice a heavy stepped steel washer. Then the outside drum. That's not dirt, that's dry lubricant. So it's important that you don't wipe that off, okay? So now we have the hub, and the hub has a flat on each side, and those flats index with the outside drum like that, okay? So if you put the hub on backwards, you got no indexing. It's not right. Do it right, okay? So now this is what we call the movable sheave, which is the angled side of the pulley, but it's a movable sheave. For you guys that are running a lot of horsepower through here or, or in mud, dirt, dust, whatever, this needs to drop through this hub freely. It's installed dry, and it, it needs to go like that. That's all, okay? So no lubricant on this. If you put grease or oil on this, it'll catch the dirt, and um, it'll not move freely, and that'll mess up the, uh, the torque converter. You'll also know that there's some zinc weights in here, and there's two springs wound around those zinc weights. What happens is when centrifugal force forces those weights out, it, it uh, pushes the, this little zinc weight up against the inside of the outside drum. That's why that's all there. So the centrifugal force allows that belt to ride deeper into this groove and um, clamp down on the pulley. It allows it to, it pushes it into the groove. Sorry. And then we have the inside sheave or the fixed sheave. And you'll notice bronze bushing on here. I don't have the Comet Dry Lube here. Sorry, Vic. But um, what I do is I, it's a, it's a bronze bushing. A couple drops of 30 weight, let it soak in. Nothing too heavy because I don't want it flying out on the belt or flying anywhere. One, once I let it sit for a day, I'll, I'll wipe it down if it has anything left on it. And then I'll put it on here. But to begin this installation, we need to get the heavy steel washer out of the package and the three quarter inch ID washer. I like to use the heavy steel washer on the crank first, the butt up against the crank. Then I'll put this washer on here. I'm going to take the bronze bushing off of this stationary sheave. What I'm looking for is a perfect alignment between this stationary sheave and this stationary sheave between the, the driven and the driver unit. If, if it's not lined up, is it still going to work? Yeah, maybe. Is it going to work its best? No. So in the link that I provided, there is a kit that we have shims. Let's see. I only have four left because I used one already. But um, we give five of these shims in a package. And, um, you know, we, we can make this either like an Audi logo or um, an Olympics logo if you had all five of them. And um, these shims are 50 thousandths thick, but they're, it's, a, it's a higher tolerance shim. It's actually 0.75 on the inside. So it's not going to, you know, like, like, like some people that, that want you to put seven washers onto a crank. No, it's hardware store stuff, and there's, that, that can create an imbalance in your engine. So we, we like to have these shims here. I like these because they're aluminum. And for my clutches, if I need space in my clutches, I want my clutch to free float, but I'll use these to keep it from hammering against the, uh, the, the radius on the crank. So with this, I could tell it was off. So I'm going to add one of the washers. beautiful perfect okay so now i can put the 
the, the bushing back on here. Um, but you know, I talk too much, and uh, I need to have some more of that Racer 5. So I know a lot of you old timers, I've rehashed this before. I get these questions all the time. So we're doing these videos. We're pasting it onto the YouTube page, Grego Garage on YouTube. Like me, you know, because if China picks me up, maybe I can get into South Korea, Japan, worldwide. Right now, the Grego Garage is locally world famous, but we're, we're stretching out, okay? We're spreading our wings because OMB is the wind beneath my wings. All right, let's get to the next question, okay? What is the part number for the OEM Genuine Comet belt for the TAV2 that also fits onto the Chinese aftermarket units? What is the part number of the OEM Genuine Comet belt that goes onto this driver? Hey, Matt Christian's in the house. Good to see you, brother. What is the part number for the Comet belt that fits the aftermarket torque converters and the genuine TAV2? Look at Randy Gumpet in the house. Hey, you, uh, you, you slackers, um, Ra Randy Blue's kicking it, okay? So he's already got two questions done. I forgot to tell you guys. Tonight we're playing for another insulated stainless steel mug, lovingly emblazoned with the Gray Goat logo, okay? So um, tonight that's what we're playing for, and uh, I'll put as many uh, gifty type items that I have here uh, inside, and um, the, the smartest cup in the planet. It keeps hot things hot, cold things cold. How does it know? It's a mystery to me smartest uh, cup on the planet okay so anyway um i hear a lot all the time where did i put that stuff that oh yeah i got a special kevlar belt well the, the best belt you can get for these converters or any converter is genuine comet brand um let's face it they know what they're doing um they've been doing it for 60 years 70 years and um this is not a bad belt the image 669 that comes with it but if you want a kevlar belt don't pay extra for it take a sharpie like i do and just write kevlar on here okay and now you've just saved yourself some money and you've got a kevlar belt okay because let's face it, they're all quality made, whether you're buying an aftermarket replacement or an OEM replacement. Kevlar's not going to get you down the road any further, okay? So here's my genuine Kevlar belt, so don't be misled. Don't pay more money for a Kevlar belt. Just buy a Comet belt, call it a day, and uh, see how easy this is? Dude, I'm living the dream here. Okay, but back to, back to my new Kevlar belt. You're going to notice on this belt that there's two distinctly different sides. This side is nearly flat, straight up and down, and this side has an angle to it. Well, why don't we match these up to the pulley? If the stationary sheaves are nearly flat, straight up and down, and the movable sheave has an angle to it, why don't we just match them up and just put the, the flat side towards the engine with the stationary sheaves and, and, and the uh, angled side? toward the outside to the angled movable sheaves, okay? So at this point, we can put our belt on. I like to force it down into the driven unit, but I can just squeeze it just a little bit, and I like to rotate it, and it'll rotate right on. So that's all there is to it. This is not rocket science, and anybody that knows me knows that I'm not that smart. So what, once that's on, in, in the, the hub, it's keyed. So we're going to put that on the crank, and we're going to make sure that the flats are out. We're going to put in our movable sheave with the springs out because the other side, I don't want that to fall apart, is the pulley. So we've got, we've got to make sure that we have pulleys on here. 
Okay, so now we can put our outside cover on. Our indexed heavy steel stepped washer. And instead of jacking on this with a jackhammer, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a bolt in here. Get it up there and snug it down. So this is child's play. One thing that I would like to see, there's no torque specs. I've never been able to find a torque spec on this bolt. Um, would love to see a lock washer on here and uh, maybe some blue Loctite. But remember, you have to get it back off again, too. So the lock washer will help you. Um, if you've already destroyed your crank because you jumped on it with an impact, then run a, run a stud into the engine, um, Loctite it in there, and then put a nut on the end. So um, the, the trick there is don't use the metric hardware if it doesn't take metric hardware. Make sure to thread all your bolts in. Make sure you know what you have before you start jumping on it with an impact. Now that we have that on, and I've got these questions before, the cover goes right over the top. But everybody says, well, where does the chain come out? Well, what you need to do is you need to cut the back of this for the chain to come out. So fairly heavy plastic on these. What I do is I use some sheet metal shears and just cut out the groove around this. But if you don't have that, you can use a hacksaw, um, a jigsaw, uh, a razor blade, uh, an angry beaver, and, and just notch out this for the chain to come through. So it's easy like that. One problem you're going to have with a lot of Predator engines, this bolt right here is not going to want to go in because of the shielding, the shroud around the engine that, that directs the cool air up this way. So I'll show you. Big fun hammer. Just take a big fun hammer and uh, ho ho hopefully a punch or something and just punch this piece of sheet metal in. Don't hit it hard. Don't hit the aluminum. Or you could cut it off, and that that will give you plenty of clearance. Um, right now, because of the way it is, we can take a Sharpie and mark this, take it off the unit, and cut it. So um, th this is uncut, but to be able to for the chain to come out, you do need to cut that. The sticker looks good, right? That's all there is to it. But wait, there's more. If you act now for the limited time only, you get a free set of steak knives. Okay, so let's get this out of the way because we're going to do some more work here. But before we do that, Chief Longwind here. Oh, I don't have to ask another question yet. So while this is all together, I'm going to hold this pulley and just get this nut loose. Okay. So let's get this off of here. And we'll just take all these pieces off. We'll take the belt off. And I'm going to take this driven back off. And I know you guys ask, you know, Eric, how do you have time to rehearse for the show? You know, with the amount of time you spend in makeup to get everything done and to look so pretty. But, um, you know, it's not all fun and games here at the Grey Go Garage. This is serious business here. So one, one thing that you're going to notice, there's three different holes on this driven unit. And you can see the red in the hole at the 12 o'clock position. That's the red spring coming through. Okay. So with these three different positions, you've got, gosh, I only ride on, on flat ground and I want it to um, shift smoothly. I have, I got a little bit of everything. It'll, it'll shift good and it'll go on the hilly ground or you have that one right there. And what, what that one is, is the, yeah, I'm going to put some juice to it and uh, I need this to shift later. One of the issues with the torque converters is as the, as the front clutch grabs the belt, it's changing the diameter of that pulley. It's getting bigger and the rear clutch is opening up and getting wider, okay? So 
But the, the, the big confusion on, for a lot of people on this is these ramps here. The ramps to me have always looked a little backwards. But if you consider that this is mounted like this and that ramp has to open backwards, it opens clockwise instead of the counterclockwise rotation of the engine. So as this opens, it goes back and not forward. If you had the buttons here on the other side of the ramp, what, what's going to happen as soon as you hit the gas, this is going to expand, the belt's going to drop in and get stuck. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. Come on now. All right? So we're going to take this unit apart, and we're going to reclock this spring. I did not rehearse this, so you're going to see it live here on Facebook in the Grego Garage. Like me on Facebook. You guys know who I am. I'm help at ombwarehouse.com. I am Eric. I am the Grey Goat. I'll do whatever I can for you. It's what they pay me for here, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this unit apart and um, hopefully, and then get it reinstalled. Um, it's probably best to have a couple extra hands around while you're doing this. But um, here in the Grey Goat, nah, we'll just use my hands. Okay, let's get on to a question. And, uh, you know, I am a little bit parched here. It rained here really hard this morning here in, in the Burbank studios of the Grego Garage. And uh, everything, well, I watered the lawn today and washed the truck at the same time. Uh, it was great. And I uh, hope the people out in the hills are doing okay. And um, I hope you all are staying warm out there because I know it's frigid across the country. Let's get on to another question, and then I got something to show you guys. The Doodle Bug, the DB30 hydraulic brake kit. We've got these back in stock, and I've got a lot of customers that are using these for many different applications. Um, I, I like these units a lot. The big issue with these is make sure you center the caliper over the rotor. If it's not centered, it's going to chew everything up and you won't be happy. Um, so many people want us to be responsible for Chinese manufacturing. Um, we can't. So anyway, how long is the hydraulic hose on this DB30 hydraulic brake kit? How long is this hose? That's the question. How long is that hose? You know, if you follow the link, you'd know. Come on now. So you may have to shim this to get the proper spacing over the rotor. But, you know, I, I, I've seen these doodle bugs. They vary up to four millimeters. So you may have to stack some washers in behind this bracket when you bolt it down. Center the caliper over the rotor. If you don't do that, it's not going to hold up. You're not going to be happy. Then you're going to uh, tell me that I sold you something that was icky. And I'm not going to be happy. And nobody's happy. So... Nice units, uh, multiple use. One thing I know is this is a 10 millimeter banjo bolt here. This bolt is common, and that makes the hose common. So I have actually done some research on, on something else I was working on, and there is different hose lengths available. If you were running a disc brake on a jack shaft assembly, this would work. So it's got everything you need. And one thing about the these is because they're hydraulic, there's a bleeder valve right there as well. So you can bleed these brakes if you, if you decide to take the hose off and use the master cylinder that's on the handle. So, yeah, these are these are nice units. Um, I've, I've got the, uh, the doodle bugs coming along that I'm building. I just don't have time for this stuff. I'm a busy guy, okay? So we're going to put that back. But uh, we'll be doing a video uh, for the installation on that as well. So... Jarrett Varholic. Good grab, brother. You follow the links well, Jared. Thank you. And speaking of Jared Varholic, um, let me put you up a link here. Um, I met Jared through a, a friend of mine, and Jared is a very talented young man. Okay? So Jared's he kind of he kind of makes me mad because um, he he has a lot of skills that I wish I had that I don't have. Um, one thing that I don't do is I don't do graphics very well, um, like my gray goat stuff. 
I live in a black and white world, and uh, Jared lives in a colored world. But uh, Jer Jared sent the old gray goat a gift package, and um, there's Jared's business card. Hope you can see that okay. There we go. All right, J Jared is a very talented young man. If you need Bronco stickers, Jared has Bronco stickers. Harrison Wildcat, guys, come on now. Get out of here. I hope you can see how nice these look. Um, being somebody that works with graphics and, and does stuff, um, I'm very impressed with Jared's work. And um, Hornet, get out of here. Sweet. Roadrunner. Perfecto. Trailblazer. Awesome. Um, never mind. We don't want to show that. But he's also making 420 stickers, 212 stickers. Jared Barholic. He is on... Um, he, he's at uh, oldminibikes.com. I put a link up there for him. And um, he, he's also on Facebook. And uh, he is visible in this community. Um, Jared has done an amazing job. I know he has cat stickers out right now. And uh, we're, we're working with Jared to perhaps get some of his product into the warehouse. But uh, for the meantime, trust in Jared. Um, nice young man. Um, probably a little more sarcastic than I am. But uh, nice kid and uh, does amazing work, and uh, you'll, you'll like the quality of, of what he's doing. So, Jared, thank you for the stickers. I appreciate that, brother. And um, all right, here we go. Looks like I have 18 minutes left. We're going to run over on this one. I, uh, I struggle with this. One thing I do when I'm working on some stuff is I'm going to grab a Sharpie out of Old Red. And I'm going to mark things. So I'm going to take a mark and put it on the top here and just put it on, on the driven unit. That way I kind of know how everything's going back together. One thing about this spring is it doesn't have a lot of tension this way. It has a lot of tension this way. So, and um, speaking of tension, I'm pretty tense too. But uh, I am liking that Racer 5 beer. So I'm going to remove the snap ring off the back of this, hopefully. And it is a giant one. I just broke those. If I can't get this off, then, you know, we're, we're, we're done. We're sunk. Okay. I hate these, but let's see if we can get that off without breaking these. These are not my favorites. So this is a big snap ring, and I typically don't work with that. Ah, just broke two. You know what? We're going to skip that. I just broke two wrenches. And um, what I intended to do was take that spring, and maybe I'll have to do this next week when I get new uh, inserts for my uh, snap ring pliers. I may have another answer for this. All right, we're going to use these big mamma jammas here, okay? So I'm going to do this off camera. Hopefully I'll get this off and not kill myself in the process. It ain't coming off. See, I should have rehearsed this. Okay, there we go. All right, so I got the snap ring off, and it did pop up because of the tension on the spring. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave everything in its orientation here. And you'll be able to see where the spring goes inside the hub here into that little hole. You can see the hole with that it just got dark and light. And we're going to index that spring right there. I still have the marks on the, uh, on the movable sheath. But I'm going to take that spring and move it to 
the most tension position, which is this here, which means I have to turn the spring tighter, right? So, and uh, that, that hole's not all the way through. So r rather than go on to Facebook and, and, and cry to everybody's mama that that hole didn't go all the way through, I'm just going to take a, a punch and just push the casting out of the back of this and say, you know, I don't have to go on to Facebook because I just fixed it with a little tiny punch. All right. So now I'm going to take that spring and I'm going to make sure that I'm oriented with my marks. And I'm going to put that spring back in that hole that I just punched out. I'll make sure that it's seated all the way down in that hole. And I don't know what that noise was just on my computer. Well, let's take this away. And get that into that hole. Where's my punch again? Now I'm going to go onto Facebook and say, you know what? That darn thing wasn't punched all the way through. Or I'm going to take my punch and just punch it out and just make sure that I can get the spring back in it. Okay. All right. Now, phew, I don't have to go onto Facebook now and, and cry about that. Okay. So I'm going to put that spring in the hub in that third hole position. You can see the red coming through there. I'm going to get this indexed back with the movable sheave. And now the hard part. Like I told you before, this movable sheave opens up backwards, clockwise, from, from the rotation of the engine. So now I have to take and tension this spring while I'm turning and pushing down. and maneuver this piece over the hub at the same time while standing on my head. All right, so I've got the tension on the spring. I can get this pushed down. And now I can put my snap ring back on. This is going to be a trick. All right, so as I'm pushing down, it's going to want to come up, and I'm going to say, nope, you got to go down. And then I'm going to try it again. This is the part that's a lot easier with two people. You'll notice when I'm trying to push this down, what I want to do is rotate this movable sheave clockwise. So the nylon ramps here go towards the clockwise side of the ramps on the hub. So I'm just going to turn that a little bit more, push it down a little bit more. Then I'm going to hold it down real tight with my hands. And get one side of this started on here. Should have worn a sweatshirt tonight. I'm starting to sweat. I guess it's working. Grab my pliers. Keep pushing down. I'm not as strong as Randy Gumpet, so I really have to bear down on this a little bit. Then I'm going to use these to open the snap ring up. Make sure that that snap ring is securely in the groove. The way I can do that is rotate this movable sheave backwards, push down, and verify I'm in the groove. I'm in the groove. That's all there was to it. I sweated a little bit, but that's all there is to it. So now I can take the nut off. Reinstall this onto the shaft. 
make sure that my shaft stays where it's supposed to be. Put the washer on and my lock nut. The lock nut is 5 16 or 15 16 wrench. And I'm going to hold the driven unit while I snug this down. I'm going to go snug with it. And then I'm just going to make sure that there's no play in there. That's all you have to do for that. And now flat side towards the engine. Give it a squeeze. Rotate it on. Get my hub back on. And I am done. Or I'm dumb. What well, one of the two. So if I can do it, you can do it. And 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 please trust me on that. Um I, I you, you see a lot of tools in the back. I don't know how to use most of them. And um, th this is stuff that every enthusiast can do on their own. You don't need to take it to a mechanic. Just take your time with it. That's, that's all there is to it. You guys ready to Google another question? I don't want to be Kool-Aid is delightful. Actually, I'm going to pour myself a little bit more of this Racer 5 India Pale Ale from Bear Republic. You see how this is working out for me? I'm actually sort of kind of working, but I'm drinking Kool-Aid at the same time. I don't do that during the day because I, I got to keep a clear head. Okay. So anyway, let's get your Googles on. We're playing Quizzo. Uh, Randy Gumpin, he's got two. Jared Barholic, he has one. So one of my favorite mini bikes that I've never had, and I've had a few nice ones, um, is the uh, Whirlwind MB4. Um, very nice little bike, has a Springer seat on it. It's a good looking little bike, very well made, um, different looking than anything else that we've seen. And, uh, it's one of the later mini bikes. Um, I think those were made maybe late seventies, eighties. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know. Um, the whirlwind MB4 mini bike has a very distinct look because of the Springer seat and the rear downward sloping frame. What was the manufacturer's name? What was the manufacturer's? Mike Peak. You jumped the gun, brother. But that's nice. Ken Bar. So Ken Bar made the Whirlwind mini bike, and uh, good looking bike. And uh, you know, if, if you guys want have one and you want to send me one as a gift. You know, I, I would really appreciate it, and, and I'll do it justice. Um, you know, Temecula Bob's in the house tonight, and uh, Bob, I, I'm I'm working on your dimensions for you for that uh, drag bike frame. I'm way stoked on that. So I'll, I'll get off my uh, rear end this weekend and get you some dimensions, and we can start uh, going on that. So uh, Ken Barr made the Whirlwind mini bike. Uh, it came with a little Tecumseh engine and a torque converter. But a uh, good-looking bike with that Springer seat and the way the – it almost looked like a chopper, like a Bonanza chopper frame, how it came down to the back axle and wrapped around. Um, send me one. I, I, I'm not against that. Um, you know, who, who, who am I to deny you your pleasure of giving locally world-famous Grey Goat a mini bike? So – and I'll make it look pretty because all my stuff's pretty. Okay? So, anyway, don't be afraid. Get your chicken hats off. You can do all this stuff. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, I've only been doing mini bikes for six, seven years now. My biggest mistake is not using more torque converters. And, you know, I've, uh, like I tell a lot of my customers, I, I made a lot of mistakes, and I made those mistakes the hard way every time. And um, I have a whole bunch of mistakes here in the garage. Um, hopefully my mistakes won't allow you to make the same mistakes and uh, we can have you on point. Um, I always say, you know, if we don't have it, you don't need it, right? We, we, we have a lot of products and uh, we are mini bike centric go-karts as well. And uh, the performance engine stuff for the Predators, um, we have all that. We, we've done some pretty uh, wild builds and we're working on another wild uh, GX200 right now that I have to beat some Arizona behind with. So um, if you have any questions, I am help 
at ombwarehouse.com. In the subject line, just put, hey, Greg Goat, sup? And I'll say, sup, sup. We're up to no good in Inglewood, you know? So, you know, we, we, we can take care of the business. So let, let me know what you need. If you need anything, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. And um, I got a message from uh, Victoria earlier. And uh, as she was walking home the other night, it was negative 10. Colder than my freezer, right? Yeah. How do you guys do that out there? Um, you know, kudos to you guys, your hearty souls. Um, but at negative 10, as she's walking home, here's a gentleman walking in shorts. How many of you guys, gals, wear shorts when it's negative 10 outside? I, I know you wear them inside the house. Um, you know, I, I, I know Randy Gumpet's in his basement uh, building mini bikes in his underwear um, at negative 10. But, you know, I'm, I'm not that strong or good looking. So um, how many of you guys wearing shorts right now? I wear shorts every day. Um, the reason I wear shorts is because I, I'm all got no butt, you know. I I don't like pants, you know. I, I think I wore pants four times last year, maybe five. I'm going with four. Um, so who, who, who's wearing shorts out there? Any of you guys? Yeah, Tyler, dude, your, your legs are pasty white. You got to wear some shorts, man. Um, Matt Christian <laughs> and uh, Randy Gumpet says he lives at a slab ranch. Well, you know, I've lived in a, a, a slab ranch as well. Um, oh, oh, yeah, Vince, dude, your legs are too skinny to wear, to wear shorts. You got to get some meat on your bones, brother. You need to have a cheeseburger, okay? Um yeah, I, uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be here at the lovely OMB Warehouse Studios and the Grey Goat Studios here in Burbank, California, where, um, you know, I've got an entire crew of people behind me, you know, hell holding the microphone, wiping my brow, doing makeup and hair, looking good tonight, right? So um, you guys out there, cover up, bundle up. Um, you know, it, it's been so, so cold that... Uh, yeah, I feel bad for you guys. Um, I grew up in, in the snow region up in the Sierra Nevadas, and um, I, I was cool with it, but I didn't wear shorts. So um, yeah, nice in Arizona right now, 66. Rained good here today. It's it's probably mid 60s here. So yeah, I'll uh, when I have to clean up this mess, I'll uh, I'll, I'll be whipping off the sweatshirt. Um, but anyway, um, Racer Five, it's nice. Randy Gumpet's got two. Jarrett's got one. Mike Peake has one. So um, either Randy's going to win or somebody uh, – or we can get a tie between Jarrett or Mike Peake. You guys ready? Google this. The Bonanza BC 1500 HS reportedly could go 0 to 50 in five seconds. Who made the engine? Six two, 185. Dude, you, you don't eat cheeseburgers? What the hell is wrong with you, boy? Yeah, eat some cheeseburgers. <laughs> Jim Byro, I never know where you're at. You're in Orlando today. <laughs> um, Easy E, Eric Lowry. He's got it on the mark. Hodaka. It was a Hodaka Ace 100, I believe, um, unless somebody can tell me differently. But I believe it was the uh, Ace 100 CC engine. So, Eric, good grab on that. So, Randy Guppet in the house tonight. He, he got it going on. So, one thing about the torque converters, if you're running higher horsepower, I know they're rated to 9 horsepower, but I got a lot of guys running a lot more juice through these things. A few upgrades you can do. Um you can always add the Comet Springs, either to the driver or the driven. But we have the aluminum weights, which will raise that engagement with the stock blue springs. Um, and I want to say it's 2,800, and I'm sorry I didn't do my homework before the show. I, I'm a busy guy. But um, we can custom tailor all, all these parts. Um, I, I have both genuine Comet on, on one bike and another bike with the aftermarket units. 
Um, the aftermarkets are nice. I, I like them. I, I don't have any issue selling them. Um, you know, the, the, the belts are the first thing to go or the bushing. But um, when you replace those with genuine Comet units, they'll last for a long time and it will make these things roar. I've got a gentleman that has a go-kart and that go-kart has, we, we built up a Hemi Predator for him and uh, he can pull the front wheels off the ground has a Tillotson carburetor, but he's using the aftermarket unit. Um, we upgraded him to the green Comet spring in the back, and we're, we're using some higher stall springs in the front and a Comet belt, and I think he's making about 18 horsepower, and it's holding up well for him. So these, these are quality units. We've got these all the time, $69.99. And let's face it, when we go to China, well, when China comes to us, we have our opportunity to source different products. Um, we chose to source the A grade units, whereas there's some B, C, D uh, units. I think there's only four different grades. But uh, we sourced the A grade units because we wanted the highest quality components that we could get for you. And we wanted these to be a, a, a good value, but also last. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. Chinese manufacturing is such that if, if I need 100000 or something, I'm going to go to the lowest bidder. And that, that's just the Chinese mentality in manufacturing. So for, for us, we, we sourced the A-grade product. We paid a few bucks more for it, but we know it's going to work well. It's going to last, and we give you the support. Because I am support at help at ombwarehouse.com. I am Eric the Gray Goat. Um, despite the way I drink Kool-Aid, I'll help you. Because I don't drink Kool-Aid during the day. No, it's coffee and water during the day. So I, I'm alert. I'm on it. I'm like a jungle cat, El Gata de Humble, okay? So if you need help, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. And uh, I'm taking the, the request lines are open for songs. So I always like to sing at the end of the show. So um, if, uh, if you have a request, the request lines are open. Um, Matt Christian, going to try 20 horse with a torque converter. One of the problems with that is... A lot of engines will nose over once the driven opens up. So because of that, um, you have to really tune this thing, really get everything down. I know a, a few guys are, are, are pinning these things so they don't move, but um, I, I don't know that I'm real keen on that, but it is a, it is a possibility. So thank you for stopping by the Gray Go Garage. I am Eric, but I'm also help at OMB Warehouse and the Gray Goat locally world famous and uh if you have anything that uh, i can do for you reach out to me help at ombwarehouse.com if you have ideas of something you want to see on the show let me know help at ombwarehouse.com thank you for stopping by tonight i appreciate you guys and uh randy gumpet i'll uh, i'll be getting a prize out to you i believe i have your address already and uh thank you all for stopping by like us on facebook Follow us on YouTube if you haven't done that already. We have a 5% discount code. And you know, like I told you last week, we didn't raise our prices 10% to give you 5% off so we can make an extra 5%. We don't roll that way. We got everyday low prices, okay? All right. Thank you for stopping by. I am Eric, the Gray Goat. You're at ombwarehouse.com. And uh, have a good night. Good night. Sleep time. Don't let the Betty Bugs bite. Stay warm because it's cold where you are, but not here. Yeah, that's an original tune. Thanks for stopping by. Good night.